grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance as you eagerly wait for that great day. This morning our focus is going to be on the prophecy from Isaiah as we uh, view all these amazing gifts God has for us to enjoy already today. Let us begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, bless our time together this morning as we gather to worship you and to listen to you. Send your Holy Spirit through the power of your word to strengthen our faith and excite us for that wonderful day, so much so that we eagerly be watchful and faithful in waiting for you to come. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Is it really all worth it? I suppose, especially as a kid, right, you, you had that Christmas gift list that you just couldn't wait to see it be fulfilled. Or maybe today you've had a little bit of a chance to, at least for a little bit, turn your home into a winter wonderland, or at least however you've always enjoyed Christmas looking like in your home. Maybe it's having relatives come into town, or, or maybe uh, everyone's going to be home for the holidays and you get to enjoy uh, that part of family. Yeah, and I know uh, Christmas dinner, maybe it takes a lot of work, and you've been baking for perhaps weeks with all the cookies and candies, but if everyone likes it, well, sure, it's worth waiting for. But are you sure everyone's going to get along this year? Are you sure that you're going to get what you really wanted this year for Christmas? We all know that the three or four or five weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas can be filled with this sort of anticipation, this sort of building up. But it's to the point that there's so much pressure to make sure we don't get Christmas wrong. We want to have all the decorations up. Uh, We want to make sure that we get the highlights on the Christmas gift list. We want to make sure everyone enjoys a a wonderful, merry Christmas. Christmas. The challenge is, is there really is no guarantee, right? All the time and the energy and the money we spend, will it really result in a good Christmas, a truly merry Christmas? If only someone has come, had come up with this magic button that they could just push and poof, it's like the movies. If only when someone had the key ingredient to a merry Christmas Then they could use a little bit of creative marketing, maybe produce a couple of anecdotal YouTube videos, offer a 100% guarantee, and that product would be flying off the shelves. But we already have it, don't we? Isn't Jesus more than just the reason for the season? He is the key ingredient that will produce peace and joy and happiness. And not only that, as we look at the prophet Isaiah this morning, after all is said and done and we go back to school and we go back to work, there's still one gift left to be opened. But we have to wait for it. You can understand why the people in Isaiah's day had such a hard time waiting for all the promises that God had given to their people for generations, going back all the way to Abraham, all the way back to Adam and Eve. That's a long time to wait, two, 3,000 years. You also understand how it was hard for them to wait when they were so easily distracted by the world around them. The world around them taught them that, oh, this is how life can be easier and more enjoyable. And, and all those rules that God gives to you, ah, those are just difficult a pain in the you-know-what. Well, God sent the prophet Isaiah. He sent other prophets like Jeremiah, Micah, and so forth. He sent those prophets, men of God, to preach his word, to warn them the path that they were going down. And as a result of their stubbornness and their rebellion, their sinfulness and their selfishness, their unrepentance, they would have to wait a little longer. It'd still be worth it, still be worth the wait. And that's the other amazing thing about the prophecies. Yes, there was doom and gloom, but there was always that silver lining that there was something to look forward to. It was going to be great and glorious. In their own divinely inspired way, each of the prophets assured God's people at this time 
that yes, you would return home one day. You'd go back to your own homes back in Israel, but most importantly, they all promised with that silver lining that their relationship with God was restored through repentance and through sacrifice. The guarantee? Well, it's there in verse 11. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. But we get it, right? 70 years, that's a lifetime. That's, that's a long time to wait. Living in a foreign land, surrounded by a pagan culture, you and I understand how it's easy to think that the grass is greener on the other side, where perhaps some of our friends live. Uh, the other side, when our friends, they get to do what they want to do. Or, or our friends that, uh, well, they seem to be enjoying life a little bit more than me. Is that the challenge? Right? Especially at this time of the year to stay focused on the reason for the season, the key ingredient. It's because we are so easily distracted and there's even better technology coming down the road that we get to look forward to. Uh, and perhaps uh, with the tax breaks that maybe might be coming through the new laws being passed, we'll have more money in our pocket to take more vacations. And the devil has a way of enticing us with the world that seems to be getting richer and more enjoyable. The distractions, right? At the same time, <clears throat> the ability to wait grows str uh, more difficult and our patience becomes shorter. Remembering, though, is the key. Remembering Jesus, the key ingredient. Remembering the promise that he gave through the prophet Isaiah. This really is Jesus speaking through the prophet as the servant of the Lord. Right? He said, well, if the seeds planted in the soil keep producing tomatoes and carrots and all these things, if it gets cold at night and warm during the day, if the sun rises every morning and the moon comes up at night... Well, then God says, I will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. And God has always kept his promises. And just look at all the gifts underneath God's Christmas tree, the cross. Here is the servant Jesus sent by God to hand deliver to all people spiritual healing of heart and soul, peace of conscience through forgiveness. Here is Jesus hand delivering there underneath the cross these presents of emancipation, right, from guilt and shame, from death and the devil, relief from fear and worry. Now, sure, these are presents we've opened up a thousand times before, but do they really get that old? If we really look into the mirror and we see ourselves if we see how easily we've become distracted over the past couple weeks, once again, year in and year out, isn't it awesome to open up that same gift from God who says, every time I forgive you. Every time we open up that gift of God's word, he says, I'll be with you even though you've kind of lost track of me. Every time we open up the scriptures, God is always there to assure you, I'll take care of your problems. But after all is said and done, as we open up those gifts each and every day through God's word, there's still one gift left to be opened. That's the one we have to sort of wait for. But Jesus describes and talks about it in verse 2 at the beginning. As that son of God, the servant of the Lord, sent to distribute hand, uh, these gifts personally to each and every one of us, he tells us he was sent to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. We get the year of the Lord's favor, right? That he forgives us anyways. That he wants to love us. That he has this whole treasures, a chest of forgiveness and peace to hand out. But notice also he says the day of vengeance. That's the promise from God that one day he will expose evil for what it is, and evil will get what it deserves. 
As much as it seems as though people are getting away with it, Isaiah assured God's people he has it, everything under control. They will get what's coming to them. And for them, it will be a great and dreadful day. But for us, there's comfort and joy. Right? One more of these gifts. To be assured, God has everything under control. All these gifts just piled up under God's Christmas tree, the cross. But so many people don't want anything to do with those gifts that are free, that are powerful. How easily people are distracted by what the devil dangles in front of them, or or maybe we could think of it as the, the tinsel of this world that glimmers and gives them hope. But we know it's just a hope and a peace that are flickering and fading away. What we know, what we have come to see, what we have held with our hands of faith are precious gifts, things we really can't wait for, things we realize it's well worth our time to wait and to be patient because we'll be blessed by the Lord's favor. We will celebrate the day of God's vengeance, not with pride and arrogance as if they're finally getting what they deserve. It's God showing himself as a just God and a God who justifies. Because we realize we deserve the same thing. It's only by God's grace through faith that, as Isaiah says, we delight greatly in that day. Our soul rejoices in our God as we wait patiently because we've been clothed with Jesus' holiness and righteousness. We've been appropriately dressed for the heavenly wedding banquet And while we wait, we get to celebrate even now the victory God will have, the victory he has already had on the cross Easter Sunday morning, the victory he has every time one of his children falls asleep in Jesus' arms and goes to heaven. There's victory for God every time a temptation from the devil is resisted and the devil is put in his place. But finally, on that last and great and dreadful day, the Lord will be praised by everyone and he will be revealed as the King of kings, the Lords of lords, and everyone will worship him. Finally, that last day, the gift, the last gift will be opened and the celebration will commence into eternity. These are the gifts that God showers upon us that we get to open each and every day, that we get to look forward to each and every day through Christ. Last week during uh, our sermon, our kids' sermon, Ethan, Len- uh, Ethan, not Ethan Lento, uh, Ethan Wolf, uh, it probably would have been Ethan Lento too, but uh, uh, Ethan Wolf uh, had an idea about how to de- uh, uh, decorate for Christmas. His idea was, well, if we have more Christmas trees in the house, we have more presents. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work at my mother-in-law's house. Uh, she has about five or six trees in her house. There's only one tree that has gifts underneath it. And we tend to have fewer and fewer, and the grandkids have more and more. Uh, But the blessing as a Christian, as we read these words, as we take time to meditate, is God's Christmas tree, the cross, has tons of presents there for us to open right now. And so as we wait for that last Christmas present, it's important for us to remember If it's worth waiting for, we want to spend time thinking about and remembering what we have seen with our eyes of faith, what we have held with our hands of faith. That baby Jesus, the salvation that he's brought to us. But after all said and done, at the end of each day, we realize as much as we enjoy opening up those same gifts every day, there's still that last gift to enjoy to be opened. And so we do well during the Advent season, during this Advent time of the world, uh, to remember, to keep Jesus in our minds, hearts and minds, day in and day out, all day long. We do so with prayerful uh, preparation, uh, studying God's word. Uh, We do so with contrite, confident confession of our sins, trusting in Jesus' forgiveness. But I think we all agree that passing the time, one of the best things to do is to be busy to be busy celebrating and letting people know about this gift. 
because it's a gift that Jesus has prepared for everyone to open on that great and glorious day. God, grant us a prayerful heart, uh, a contrite heart, but also a busy heart as we prepare people for that great day when the last gift will be opened. God, grant us that through the power of his spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, the joy that fills our hearts, which surpasses our human understanding, will keep and guard your hearts through faith in Christ as you serve him.